and more children are out of school, but parents don't want math learning to stop. They're turning to Mathnasium at home. Real-time math instruction tailored to your child's exact educational needs. It's the same face-to-face -face live instruction used in our centers for over 15 years, now on a computer. Your child can keep their math skills sharp, catch up, or soar ahead, from home or anywhere with an internet connection. To learn if Mathnasium at home is right for your child, visit mathnasium.com slash at home. Mathnasium at home, changing lives through math. All right, hello everybody, happy Friday. Welcome to today's Mathnasium Schoolhouse. My name is Kevin, and today we are gonna be doing our second lesson on quantitative analysis. And if you were here on Monday, you might remember that uh, we had a little bit of difficulties, so we're gonna go ahead and use today as a bit of a review, and then we'll be uh, looking at some new stuff. So if you don't already, go ahead and download the worksheet from Monday, it's the same one, should be in the comments for, um, sorry, for the description for our, for our lesson today. And we're gonna go ahead and get started on page number three. All right, so let's just make sure that everybody has that and that we're good to go. All right, looks like we're all set. So, looking at number one. One quarter compared to one eighth. Is it greater than, less than, or equal to? So if we think about pizza, would you rather have one quarter of a pizza or one eighth of a pizza? The other thing we can do here is we could draw a picture. All right, so we have our pizzas here. Here's our one quarter slice versus our one eighth slice. Not a great drawing, but we can see but the one quarter picture is bigger, so that is greater. All right, looking at four eighths versus two fourths for number two. Both of those are another way of saying what? If we reduce both of those fractions to the lowest common denominator, they both, uh, they both are one half. So those are equal. All right, number three, to do a little bit of arithmetic for number three. So what do we think? Two times nine times five compared to five times two times nine. Well, if you've looked at, or if you've studied multiplication, or maybe you've been to a mathnasium and you've learned about the commutative property, we know that when we're multiplying, if the numbers are the same, the order doesn't matter. So what do we think for number three? Do we even need to do the arithmetic to get the answer? Right. No, they're the same. Good job. Equal. All right. Number four is three weeks greater than, less than, or equal to 20 days. Well, how many days are in one week? How many days are in one week? Yeah, very good, there's seven days in one week. So if we have seven days in one week, there's three, so that would be what, 21 days? So it's greater. And again, a little bit of a review from last time is we know that it's easier to compare our two numbers when they have the same name. So if we're looking at weeks versus days, it's much easier to make an accurate comparison when we have them both in days. All right, last one here, number five. 10 quarters and five dimes. Is it greater than, less than, or equal to $3? Well, let's give ourselves a little bit of room to work with here. My 10 quarters is how much money? $2.50, right? I know that a quarter is 25 cents. 25 cents 10 times, $2.50. My five dimes is another 50 cents. 
So if I add all that up, I get $3, and we know that those are equivalent. All right, on to the second half of page number three. Second half of page three. One whole compared to 11 tenths. Well, if you've looked at improper fractions before, maybe you realize that if the numerator is greater than the denominator, that means that we have more than one whole, right? 10 tenths would be one whole, right? Our whole circle would be filled in. So then if we have 11 tenths, that means that we have an additional piece We have an additional piece out of another hole. So it's greater than one hole. Because what we're really looking at is that 11 tenths is greater than 10 tenths. All right, 100 dimes and $10. Can somebody tell me how much money 100 dimes is? How much money is 100 dimes? How much money is 100 dimes? How much money is one dime? One dime is 10 cents. 10 cents. So 10 cents, 100 times is how much? Good. We can think about it as 10 tens. If we break 100 into 10 times 10. So 10 cents 10 times gives me a dollar, and a dollar 10 times, right? All of this at the end of the day, 100 times is $10. Those are equal. All right, number eight. I have 321 times four and 321 times seven. So if the first part of my multiplication problem is the same, then really I'm just comparing the second part. So as seven, greater than, less than, or equal to four. We know that seven is greater than four. So what we're really saying is here is that I'm counting 321 more times when I have 321 times seven than I am for 321 times four. Nice job. Okay, three eighths compared to zero. We know that a fraction is a part of a whole and zero is nothing or none of it. So would you rather have part of something or none, none of it? Would you rather have part of a candy bar or no candy bar? I'd rather have part of a candy bar. Three eighths is greater than zero. Number 10, 12 plus six plus 20 plus 30. Is that greater than, less than, or equal to 100? So we can do some smart addition here. 20 and 30, I know is 50. 12 and 6 is 18. And before I go any farther, I know that 50 is half of 100. So I would need at least another 50 to get equal to 100. And I don't. I only have 18. So it must be less than 100. Without even having to finish the math problem, I know that the sum of those four numbers is less than 100. All right. Number Page number four, number one. 25 plus 25 plus 25 compared to 100. How many quarters are in a dollar? I have four quarters in a dollar. Good job. And a quarter is worth 25 cents. So how many 25s do I need to equal 100? I would need four. Very good. So the sum of those numbers is less than 100. Pretty quickly, we can figure out that it's 75. And again, proving that it's less than 100. Number two, 10 dimes, 10 cents, 10 times is $1. And 10 quarters, 25 cents, 10 times, we've done this a couple times, is $2.50. That is very good, greater than, it's a terrible greater than sign, it's greater than $3, it's $3.50. 
All right, three months compared to 10 weeks. Three months compared to 10 weeks. How many weeks are in a month typically? Typically, we would say there's four weeks in a month. So if I have four weeks in one month, count that three times, that gives me 12 weeks. Very good, which is greater than 10 weeks. Nice job. Okay. 100 quarters. We have 100 quarters. How much money do we have? We've got 25 cents 100 times. So that means we have 25 hundred cents. And if there's 100 cents in a dollar, we wind up with $25. And those are equivalent. 100 quarters equals $25. Number five. Five quarters. Well, I know that four quarters is a dollar. So a dollar plus one more quarter is a dollar twenty-five. Five dimes is fifty cents, and five pennies is five cents. So thinking about this, let's just use a little bit of logic here. Is that going to get close to five dollars? No, right. To get from $1.25 up to $5, we need around $4. And we're not even close to that. We don't even have a whole nother dollar with our 50 cents and our 5 cents. So that is going to be significantly less than $5. Good job. Bottom half here of page number four in your packet if you're following along. Three yards is that greater than, less than, or equal to 100 inches. Well, a couple different ways we can do this, right? How many feet are in a yard? How many feet are in one yard? How many feet are in a yard? Somebody out there knows the answer to that question. I'm sure you do. Yeah, good, three feet. So one yard, one yard is three feet. Okay, so I have how many feet? Three yards, three feet, three times, and nine feet. And I know that in one foot there's 12 inches, so if I have 12 inches nine times, nine times 12, what? What is 9 times 12? Well, I know that 10 times 9 is 90, and 2 times 9 is 18. If I add those up, I get 108 inches. So it's greater. All right. Number 7. 29 times 23, is that less than, greater than, or equal to 23 times 29? We've done a couple of these different problems now, reinforcing the fact that the order of our multiplication problem does not matter as long as the numbers are the same. It's the commutative property of multiplication. So those are equivalent. Number eight, how many days are in one year? If we're looking at two years compared to 500 days. In one year, there's 365 days in one year. And I have two years. Right, so I need that twice. We can tell already that we have a number that's going to be greater than 500. We know that half of 500 is 250. So if I have 365 doubled, that's already greater than 500. Good job. All right. 
number nine. We have 4,500 plus 489 plus 38. Is that less than, greater than, or equal to 5,000? Well, Four thousand five hundred is already really close to five thousand. So I'm thinking it's probably going to be equivalent or greater. Now I know that from four thousand five hundred up to five thousand is another five hundred. So that would get us to be equivalent. So now let's just determine if four hundred eighty nine plus thirty eight is equal to or greater than or less than 500. What do we think? Right? Good. This is going to be, just this sum, is going to be greater than 500, which means that my whole solution must be greater than 5,000. If I'm adding a number bigger than 500 to 4,500, I know that my sum will be greater than 5,000. All right, 500 minus 100 plus 300, is that less than, greater than, or equal to 500? So 500, take away 100 is 400, adding 300 back, we get to 700, which is greater than 500. All right, we are cruising right along today. Hopefully, everyone's got their worksheet. Working along nicely, enjoying their Friday afternoon. A little bit of math can't hurt. Okay, so number one, and we are on the next page here. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, and then I'm going to go to 11, and then we'll do the second half of the page, and we'll do 6 through 10, and then 16 through 20. So just follow along with me here on the screen if you can. Looking at a half compared to a quarter. Half of a pie or a quarter? Which one's larger? All right, very good, a half. One ninth compared to one third. So since we're looking at a lot of fractions here, I want to think about if we have a thing, if we have a pizza, and I cut it into nine pieces. So I take one whole thing, cut it nine pieces, and I take one of those pieces. And these are not, this is not a very good drawing, so I apologize. Or I take that same size thing, and I cut it into three pieces, and I take one of those. Which is bigger? Yeah, very good. One third is larger. So if we're looking at fractions that have the same numerator, my numerators here are the same, one and one, the fraction with the smaller denominator compared to 9 is going to be the bigger piece. I'm cutting my thing into less parts. All right, number three, five days or 120 hours. Well, how many hours are in one day? There's 24 hours in one day. That means we have 24 hours five times, and that equals 120. Very good. So they are equivalent. All right, one and a half feet is that greater than, less than, or equal to 20 inches? Well, we know that one foot is 12 inches, and my half a foot is 6 inches, so one and a half feet is 18 inches, and that is less than 20. Good job. Number five, a quarter of a year compared to three months. If one year is 12 months, what's a quarter of 12? If my whole is a 12, it's 12, and I divide it into four equal parts, what does each of those parts have to be? All right, very good, three. So one quarter of 12 is three. 
three months, they are equivalent. Nice job. All right, number 11. 5 times 34, 5 times 72. Very good. 5 times 34 is less than that. I have a significant fewer number of 5 if I'm multiplying 5 times 34 compared to 5 times 72. I've got a much, much smaller number. These two are the same problem, so no math needed here. We know that they're equivalent. Very nice. 125 dimes or to 100 nickels. 125 dimes. 100 dimes is $10. 25 dimes is $2.50. So I have $12.50 on the left. And 100 nickels. Well, if a nickel is 5 cents, 5 cents a hundred times gives me five dollars. So that's greater. I have a greater number of something that's worth more, right? I have more dimes which are worth more money. 125 times 10 is more than a hundred times five. That's another way to think about that. All right, number 14, 123 plus 45 compared to 200. Yeah, very good. 200 is going to be greater. We could do the arithmetic here, right? We could line these up. We could add them up. We know that we get 168. Or just knowing if these numbers were maybe... 150 plus 50, we would be equivalent, but both numbers are smaller than our estimation. If you were with me last week, we did a lesson on estimation and rounding, which ties right into this because we know pretty quickly that 123 plus 45 is less than 200. All right, let's think about number 15. If I have, let's see, I have 100 pieces of candy. And I'm either going to split them up between four kids or five kids. In which of these scenarios do the kids get more candy? Yeah. If we take something and we split it up into less groups, each group is going to be larger. So that's going to be bigger. We could do the math and we get 25 20, but if we just think about that, if we take the same amount of things and we split it up into less number of groups, each of those groups must be larger. Good job. All right, and our last page here, I believe. Yep, all right, last page, so the last half of page number five. We've got an improper fraction, seven fourths, compared to one. Well, I know that four fourths is the same thing as one. Seven is larger than four. My numerator there is bigger, so it must be greater. A half and two quarters are those equivalent fractions. Think about that for a minute. If you have one out of two, or if you have two out of four, yeah, very good. Those are equal. Number eight. 3 eighths compared to 8 thirds. Our proper fraction there on the left we know is a part of a whole, and our improper fraction means we have more than a whole. Well, more than a whole is less than a part of a whole, certainly. So our 3 eighths is less than 8 thirds. All right, number 9. 25 months or 2 years. Well, there's 12 months in one year, so 2 years is 24 months. Which of those is larger? Very good. 25. All right. Number 10. 12 plus 52. Is that less than, greater than, or equal to 12 plus 29? Well, on the left-hand side, I'm adding more to 12. My number is getting larger by 52. It's supposed to be larger by 29. So, again, without doing any real math here, if I can write the answer to that one's going to be larger. Good job. A couple more problems. Two and a half decades 
It's like greater than, less than, or equal to 25 years. Well, how many years are in a decade? Think about the prefix deca. A decagon has 10 sides. So we think it's 10. Yeah, good. Decade is 10 years. So if I have two and a half tens, I've got one ten, two tens, and a half of a ten. Half ten is five. So that gives me 25 years. Very good. It's our equivalent. All right, 17. We've done this drill a couple times. We know that a fraction is less than a whole. Right off the bat. 16 dimes versus 6 quarters. 16 10 cent pieces or 6 25 cent. Not readily obvious based on that, right? So let's do do the math, figure out how much money total both of these are worth. 16 dimes is a dollar and 60 cents and 6 quarters Four quarters is a dollar, two more quarters left over, gives me a dollar fifty. So in this case, 16 dimes is the greater value. All right, 300 take away 123, compared to 300 take away 234. Well, on the left hand side, I'm taking away less from 300, right? 123 is a smaller number, so I'm taking away less from my starting point of 300, which would leave me with a larger number. And last one for today's lesson, 13 twelfths compared to a whole. We've done this a few times. We know that 12 twelfths is the same thing as one whole. 13 twelfths is greater than 12 twelfths. My improper fraction is greater than my whole. Okay, cool. I hope you guys enjoyed today's lesson. I hope you're excited for your weekend. Hopefully you guys have some cool plans coming up. If you enjoyed today's lesson, please check out your local Mathnasium. You can go to mathnasium.com and they'll help you find your local learning center. We'd really love to see you guys in. Maybe we'll be able to help you out with your math, getting ready to go back to school. Very exciting. Other than that, we'll see you guys next week. Thanks again for joining. Hopefully you had a good time. It's afternoons that seem to be the most hectic for us, so it was much more convenient when we found Mathnasium at home. Alright, so how do we do half of five? I think one of the best things about at home is that it really feels like you're almost at home with the student in their house teaching them. I'm in my comfort zone. You can just ask for help and the instructor will come right to you. With Mathnasium at home, I know that they're getting the help that they need. Awesome, great job. Mathnasium, changing lives through math.